Hello everyone, this is Jack with Obedia. Today we're going to be looking at setting up a template in Studio One. Let's get started. Okay, so as you can see, I have uh, seven different tracks loaded in this session or this song. Uh, I've mixed these tracks. Uh, you could have recorded the tracks or maybe you just received them to mix or edit or whatever. And uh, you can see if I open up the mix window here, I've got some plugins and some settings saved that I like. Uh, the track is sounding good. And at this point, what I want to do is I'm done with this song and I want to use this point or these settings as a uh, reference point or a starting point for another track. So maybe I'm mixing another track that's basically the same instrumentation or something like that. Or maybe I'm recording another track that's basically the same as far as the same number of tracks, uh, etc. And I want to use these settings again. I don't want to have to save each setting and write them down or recall them or something like that. So what I'm going to do is create a template. So uh, if I go up here to file, I can uh, go to save as template. And then I get this little save as template window where I can title the template. So in this case, the song is called Yesterday, but uh, perhaps I want to put the album name. So if there was an album, I could say uh, the album name here, or maybe this is like a, a genre based template. So maybe this is like an acoustic singer songwriter template. So I could say uh, singer songwriter template, whatever. Um, and then the description, I can put whatever information I want. In this case, uh, I've got seven tracks and I've added effects. I don't have any buses or any other sins or anything like that. So maybe I could just say like seven tracks with effects. You can put whatever you want in there. I can also add an icon. Uh, this is kind of nice because it gives you a little bit more visual information. Perhaps you have a icon for a singer songwriter, or maybe this is uh, a template for an album and you already have the album artwork and you want to put that in there. So that's an option there. And now I could click OK and create a template. Now, that being said, um, we're going to see that we just made a mistake. And this is a mistake that a lot of people make, which is why I put it in this video. Um, so if I just save the song right now, so I'm kind of done with this and then I close this and I'm going to go create a new song and start with that template that we just created. So uh, normally when you cl click uh, create a new song, you've got three different uh, groups of templates. You've got styles, which automatically come with studio one interfaces which come with studio one these are also templates uh, unfortunately these are only personas interfaces so if you have an interface from another company these basically don't apply to you um, or they may not apply to you and then user so these are where your user templates are going to be stored so in this case this is the one that i just created uh, you can see some information about that and then i can title this new song whatever that is so maybe this song is called tomorrow that was yesterday this one is tomorrow um, now, at this point, if I click OK, I'm going to create a new song with all of the settings, at least that's what we think, from the last song. As soon as I do that, what you'll see is we actually created a template with data in it, with audio in it. And a lot of people don't mean to do that. A lot of people mean to just create the template with the other information besides the audio. So at this point, somebody might say, oh, well, I didn't mean to do that. So now I'm going to delete this information and then hit save. And at this point, maybe they want to continue recording or mixing the song, the new song. So in this case, tomorrow. Um, however, what we'll notice is if we go into browse, even after you've deleted these, uh, these bits of information here, if I go over to pool, you can see that those clips or the files um, are still in the session. Now, I don't want them in this session because these files have nothing to do with this song. That was the previous song. So what I'm going to do is select those files and then I can, I have all these options here or I can just remove from pool and hit delete. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to select them, hit delete. And now at this point, I still have my mix, which is what I want. I don't, I still have my tracks, but I don't have any of the clips and I don't have any files in the pool which is very useful as far as now I have basically a template. So now what I'm going to do is go into file, save as template. And instead of creating a new template, I'm going to replace the existing one. So I'm going to click on that singer songwriter template that we just created a second ago that had the audio in it that we didn't want. And I'm going to hit open. And now I'm going to overwrite that template. 
So at this point, I can save this song because maybe I am going to work with tomorrow as far as the, the song. Um, but I just want to close it for a second and see if my template works. So I can go to create new song, go back to that template. And now when I open it, I shouldn't have any content. I don't. And then if I look at my pool, there's nothing in the pool either, which is good. So now I have essentially what I wanted to create in the first place, a true template, just a template that has the tracks, the colors, the track names, any volume or panning information, all of my plugin settings, etc. So basically, if, if you get into a situation where you want to create a template, but you maybe accidentally save some audio in it, that can actually create a lot of problems in the future if you don't go back and fix that template. Um, you can imagine if there's a problem with the template and you maybe didn't know about that problem and you've created 10 songs from that template, now you have 10 songs with that same issue. So this is just a way to uh, make sure that you're creating a template in a good way and the template is what you want. Of course, in cer certain situations, maybe you want the template to have certain sounds. Maybe every time, uh, maybe you're a, a, a hip hop producer and you have a tag that you use with all of your beats and you want to make sure that tag is in there, then in that case, we would have deleted everything in the session besides maybe the tag track. And then we would have kept that tag track. So anyway, that's something, just a, a small tip for you uh, when you're creating templates. And uh, hopefully you can go forward and, and make that useful for your sessions. Thanks for checking out this video and be sure to check out some of the other content on our YouTube channel. Today's Pro Audio hardware and software can give you excellent results if you know how to use it properly. Obedia can help you to get the most out of your Pro Audio hardware and software. Why spend your time scouring the internet for answers or digging through manuals? With one quick call to an Obedia technician, you'll be connected with someone who can give you the answers that you need in real time via phone and remote desktop. Obedia technicians are trained in all major digital audio applications on Mac, PC, iOS, and Android devices. Obedia member subscriptions are cost effective, give you great member benefits, and Obedia is here seven days a week to help you get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software. No matter what your level of expertise, Obedia can help you to stay focused and productive and get your music back on track. Start taming your technology today with Obedia.